All right, so welcome back. Hope you all had a refreshing little break. Um, <laughs> we have Aloria joining us, so welcome, Aloria. Hello. Hi, how are you, you doing? Are you okay? I'm good, how are you? Happy Saturday. And happy Saturday to you, <laughs> and nearly happy Sunday in the UK. For oh, us. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for yeah, for us, it's it's only uh, 7 o'clock-ish around here, so. So whereabouts are you, on the east side of the US? Yeah, I'm in uh, Brooklyn, New York, so. All right, that's oh, the coolest cool. place I can think yeah. of. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, welcome along. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you've been listening in, but it's kind of been a little bit freewheeling and people have been talking yeah. about what they want to speak about and we've kind of asked a few questions and it's it's been generally, I don't know, pretty relaxed. Uh-huh. So what do you have for us? What would you like to speak about? I, I don't I know. Uh, I, I really didn't uh, actually think about that too hard before I uh, logged on uh, just now. Uh, what are you, are you guys all drinking beer over there? We're having, We're beers. having a few beers. Yeah. We're having a few beers, okay. and hopefully you're you're joining in if that's your thing. Um, I uh, I just had a very fine bottle of uh, sake. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, I think I, I think I, you, you might be on the wrong channel, Aloria. <laughs> a little bit too sophisticated for anything. Yeah. Like it's I was the forgotten say. Japanese spirit, Yaha, yeah, Yamaha yeah. Junmai. Wow. wow! Tell us who you are and what you do. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I'm Aloria. Uh, my real name is Kelly, um, and I've been doing application security probably since around like 2003, 2004. Uh, started out working in the government, uh, that was a little weird, uh, writing code base for the military, and then just kind of cool. pivoted back into application security. I was a web developer uh, to pay, pay the bills when I was in university. So, um, and now I, um, I'm uh, basically just sort of a free range application security consultant, and I also teach application security at NYU. Uh, wow. At, at, at night, so. Uh, Corrupting the youth, <laughs> the new generation of, of security practitioners uh, that, that will be probably uh, coming out and asking for jobs and stuff. So. I think I think back <laughs> in the day, you were probably one of the first people that I started following on InfoSec Twitter. Okay. And I was always amazed okay. at your kindness and just how much you do seem to care about the community. But, you know, I, we've been talking a lot. One of the themes that we've had this evening was really around handling toxicity. And yeah. I mean, you've been with Twitter since almost Twitter began, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's been, a, it's been like 10 years. Right. I, 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 yeah. So is it, <laughs> is it a, a bottomless shit show of awfulness or is it improving? <laughs> where, where, what's your take on it? Because you have a unique perspective because of the length of time you've been part of this online community. I, I, I think I think it's gotten a, a lot better where people are, and I don't like to use the term woke, so I'm going to use it in like scare quotes. You can't see me doing the, the okay. quote hand gesture. <laughs> Oh, we but, could um, say it. We could say it <laughs> <laughs> mentally. Uh, yeah, I, I think um, I think now people are much less afraid to, uh, you know, call out toxic behavior and uh, you know say like like dude, you're or girl, you're you're being a douchebag. Like, cut it mm -hmm. out. Uh, where like back when. I first joined it was it was still like 4chan was like still a big thing like everybody was like oh I'm a troll <laughs> look at me right. trolling you know and and just being um controversial for controversial sake sake uh my mom always had this um kind of uh saying like you know they're they're just getting negative attention but negative attention is still attention where now people kind of realize that you know, the stuff that you say online can come back and bite you in the ass later. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I also think that, you know, like I said before, um, people are a little bit less afraid to be like, um, you, you can't act like that towards other people. Like, yeah, yes, it's the internet, but we're all still, there's still like a human behind the keyboard and stop being a, a, a pile of shit. Um, and and I, I think one of the reasons why I've, been a little bit more resilient to it is like i'm a fucking new yorker like <laughs> okay you, good if point you, <laughs> if you like if, if you actually like sit that like new yorkers are you know they get a reputation for being you know hard around the edges and 
you know, um, sort of assholes. But like, if you meet a New Yorker, like you ask them for directions, they're usually more than happy to help you. They love to show off yeah. their knowledge of the city, give you recommendations, good places to go. Um, like if you get sick on the subway, somebody will probably come and come rush right over to help you. I remember um, one time I saw like a guy, um, he got doored by a bike. Uh, okay. So like a guy, he, well, he was on a bike and like somebody swung out their car door and he got clipped by it and he fell down in the road and like three people just ran over right away to help him. Like, and, and that's sort of the thing I think with uh, InfoSec Twitter is that like, it's sort of like being a New Yorker in New York City is that, um, you know, like you, you see, you see the hard edgedness, but when you dive deeper, you uh, understand that, you know, people are going to, you know, pick that. Mm-hmm. you know bruised and dirty biker off the road and, and uh, i think people i i think people are starting to learn that being compassionate and being nice is not a moral failing and it's not a sign of weakness it's another thing because like i mean i understand you know like i was a hacker back in the late 90s yeah you know, everybody was you know messing up everybody else's stuff and you know just you know, for the lulls uh, in in the early 2000s and, and whatnot, and you know, like it, okay, it's it's cool to be edgy and whatnot, but it's um, I think at the end of the day, you're gonna go home and lay in your bed, and you're gonna like feel good and pat yourself on the back for being like too edgy, like being an mm-hmm. edgy lord. I mean, I'd rather go to bed saying like I was a nice person and maybe I helped somebody out. So. Yeah, I love I love that. Um referenced new being a new yorker i've been in new york um in my life <laughs> well that's um, that's where hackers uh, began yeah but it, like that's it, the... I've, I've got yeah a, yeah I, i've been i've been to stuyvesant high there is no pool on the roof <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's, in my experience i mean I, i've been to new york and i've been to london okay <laughs> and uh in new york i found the new yorkers to be some of the warmest people i've ever met in one of the coldest cities i've ever been in <laughs> and in london i've found it to be some of the coldest people i've ever met in one of the warmest cities in the uk <laughs> well this summer yeah it was. Yeah. yeah and 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 yeah i i completely agree with that and i think that it, you do get that level of pragmatism in in your average New Yorker, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, everything. Yeah, I mean, the, like the reason why New Yorkers are, are sort of reserved and and because we're like crammed into tiny boxes. Like we live in tiny tiny little apartments. We get on a tiny little subway train to go to work, and then we sit in a tiny little office. So like all of our time is like being like basically elbow to elbow with other people. So we're just like, we don't want to fucking deal with people, but when yeah. we have to, we're nice people. I mean, yeah. that's the sort of the internet as well. It's like you get inundated with hot takes and <laughs> whatever, yeah. but you know, when, when something comes out, like I remember, um, you know, I've seen a lot of people who have had, you know, financial problems or mental health problems or whatever, or pro- you know, problems getting their career on track and people rally for for that like once they they see something and they're like i'm gonna help you and and i think I, that's great you know like for the most part we we make snarky jokes i um i i am i am probably way guiltier of that than i should ought to be but you know like when, when somebody needs help we we go for it i've i've really seen that in both the defcon community um and the, the hacker communities but I also note that the fact that there are an awful lot of ex-military and even you know current military reserve members in our information security community. Mm-hmm. Do you think folks struggle sometimes with, um, especially the military community on top of information security, communicating to businesses? Do, do you find that the communication is, is maybe one of our key problems? Uh, I wouldn't say that's that's something that's unique to you know ex military people. I know like I worked for uh, the United States Army for two and a half years, and it is uh, the mindset is a lot different when you go into you know private sector. Like I, I worked for a, a lot of different financial companies, and you really have to, you know, like you don't have a guaranteed budget. You know, you have to make a case for yes, this is costing you money, but it's going to keep you off of the front page of the Wall Street Journal, kind of. Yeah. tactic uh so it, it's it's just a different kind of scary uh from military to you know uh finance or any other private private sector job where military you're like if we don't fix these bugs you know war fighters are going to die whereas right. it's like if we don't fix these bugs your stocks are going to ta- tank and you're going to be eating spaghettios cold out of a can 
<laughs> right, right. Two different levels of yeah. Of, yeah. So just no truth to the rumor that uh, Code Red and Nimda were, were actually yours? You didn't I, write I, those? I, okay. Wait, there's a rumor? Yeah, I'm kidding. I make no, no, up. no. I, I mean, like, I, I don't. I don't think there's ever been like a rumor uh, about me, like, like that. Um, okay. So, I mean, if there was, I probably wouldn't even be mad. I'd be like, okay, well, people, are, Can people I ask think a, I'm badass, so that's that's neat. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I've got a question for you. Okay. So I do AppSec, and the clue's probably in my handle. Um. And I know I Sean, you were a network guy, but no, 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 no. <laughs> I've lived that life too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we all we all do. And yeah, Sean Wright, yeah. who's a, a fellow member of the Bear Farmers, he he does application security as well. Now, mm -hmm. the question is, in in the world of application security, we're all kind of conditioned to follow along the OWASP top ten and all that kind of stuff, and yeah, and that kind of is we're led to believe that reflects the modern threats and trends and vulnerabilities that exist in application security. But I actually really only see one major problem, and that major problem is third-party compromise uh, in terms of uh, JavaScripts that you're consuming upstream in your application yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So the question really is, what are you seeing? Is that Does what I see reflect what you see, or are there things I'm missing? Um, so, you know, you, you do see, I, I still see cross write request forgery. Um, I, I still see SQL injection. Um, so, I, you know, the OS top 10 is still, I'd say, valid for the most part because, and it, you know, like it is kind of disappointing when, it, when you see like, okay, it's 2019 and I'm still finding SQL injection, WTF. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, but I, I, I really do think that we need to kind of modernize a lot of stuff. I, I, everyone's kind of sitting around being like, wait, what, how do I Kubernetes? What, yeah, right. wait, what, what is the best practice for that? You know, like there isn't any sort of checklist that you can say like, it, it's, it, everyone's still like, it's, it sort of reminds me of when, when cloud services started to come out. Um, you know, maybe maybe around ten years ago, where everyone's like, "Cloud, how do I cloud?" And now everyone's like, "How do I? How do I? Uh, how do I Kubernetes? How do I? Um, you know, um, Docker? How do I do like all, all this containerization oh. stuff?" It's just it just seems like we're always playing a catch up game. Oh. Whereas we, I would love to see where we're a little bit more forward thinking and say, okay, maybe this isn't the next big thing, but we should probably try to figure out security before it just in case well, it does because it comes the next big thing rather than playing catch up where everyone's like, oh yeah, uh, so I have all this stuff out here using the latest and greatest, but oops, it's all insecure because nobody told me how to secure it because nobody yeah. was thinking that it was actually gonna become what it became. And I guess, so, I think, sorry, Sean, just one, one sec, mate. And I guess what that proves is that we, we're now talking about software as everything, right? Yeah. So your infrastructure as code is now code. Um, everything else is software and configuration. And I guess therein lies the problem of introduction of risks. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so the one thing that's always kind of um, made me worried and, and frustrated in a sense is, so, for example, I went through a three-year consult course, did it on this, not once did I learn, hey, what's cross-site scripting? What's SQL injection? So yep. you've, you've got all these people learning how to develop, but they have no clue about developing securely. They're not even aware the code they're developing is insecure. So I see you mentioned you, you uh, do stuff for NYU. Is that changing? Are, are, are the base fundamental like computer science degrees changing and building security into them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're definitely trying to, you know, okay, you want to write, for example, um, I mean, everyone's moving towards managed languages. I remember when I took computer science, it was uh, all uh, C, C++, and nobody ever told me how to properly or securely manage memory. But now that everything's moving towards Java, Go, uh, Ruby, things like that, um, you the focus needs to be, and, and I think, um, especially at NYU, uh, because they have a entirely dedicated um, computer security program um, that we're trying to get, 
I actually would, would love to sit down and audit one of like the, you know, CS 101 classes just, just to make sure that they're not doing anything weird. Um, I should probably do that. Thank you. I will write that down. Um, but um, I don't, I, I, I can only speak for, for my experiences at, at NYU, but it, it definitely is trying to, to bake that in, in, in terms of here's the right way to do things um, and explain. I, I, I also think that a lot of the classes, sorry, I'm, I'm kind of switching tracks here. Some of the classes, a lot of the classes teach you the right way to do things, but they don't explain. What I would like to see is here's the wrong way to do it. Here's the right way to do it. And here's why the wrong way to do it is totally going to ruin your day. Yeah. Or down the line, you're going to, you know, like somebody's going to do like a pen test or somebody's going to hack your site and then you're going to be working weekends. Here's why you don't want to do this because you're going to be working weekends. Yeah. Like, I, I don't, I, I don't like, you know, the constant scaremongering that, that a lot of security people do. But I think for uh, somebody who's just starting out uh, learning how to code or, you know, learning how to do uh, software engineering or, uh, you know, system architecture, just saying like, this is this is gonna make you make you have a bad day or a bad evening or yeah. a bad couple evenings. P pain as um, a pain is a modifier of behavior. Yeah. Or a potential pain. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of when I um uh went to uh school to uh, driving school to to get my driver's license. They showed us like you know like videos of car accidents and like how the jaws of life work, like to cut people out of cars and all this stuff and you're like this is why you wear your seatbelt. this is why you use your turn signal this is why you don't right. you know like cut across three lanes or go 30 miles over the speed limit it just like huh. sometimes you kind of have to i mean that that's that's probably why i would never be a good coder actually is because like every time i try to write code my butthole clenches a little bit <laughs> Because I'm like, oh God, if I write insecure code, everyone is going to give me shit because I should know better. <laughs> but but so I want to throw something into the mix here because this is what I find pretty frustrating. At the end of the day, the application sits on a lot of other stuff, right? Yeah. And I sort of wonder how frustrating it is from a software development perspective when you know the servers aren't patched and can't even support TLS 1.3. And mm -hmm. then the firewall networking people have opened up, you know, half a dozen ports to the actual server that you're sitting on. Like, I get OWASP 10, but I mean, if you're building a house of cards on something that's already yeah. you know, old, that I how and and so I guess the big question is: Do software devs need to understand the whole stack from layer one all the way up to uh, layer seven? I, um, I, I'm going to say right now, yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, it shouldn't be that way because every layer of, you know, implementation should have security savvy people so that we can trust them to, you know, trust, but verify, but still, right. you know, understand that we have documented, okay, you wanted to punch five holes in the firewall. Let's, let's understand why that is and maybe revisit it down the line and see if we still need those holes punched and we could maybe close them up. Um, but now I think, you know, um, yeah, it, it's sort of like uh, the, the analogy I use with my students is sort of like the leaning tower of Pisa, okay. which is, you know, it, it's properly, it's, it, it's a perfectly nice architected building, but they built it on um, a very uh, crappy land. And uh, the, and now it's tilting and the uh the building wasn't designed to uh hang at that angle right. so uh now there's there's all this upkeep that they need to do because you know like you have this giant tower that's leaning at like what like a 35 75 whatever degree yeah. angle um and uh it wasn't built to handle that angle just like an application where you know you built it securely assuming that all of the stuff underneath is secure uh it's not gonna work at that angle if all the stuff you know you need to code defensively knowing what the underlying stuff is so that you know like hey okay well um uh, we're building uh we haven't been able to patch to the latest greatest version of i don't know node.js or um you know apache or whatever the heck you're using uh mm -hmm. or you know like we're 
we we're still running on like Windows Seven or uh, I can think of like you know no, but you, have to, you, have, you have to take that into consideration when you're building your application because you can't assume that your foundation is good. Agreed. And going back to your point, Ian, there. Um, Certainly in the UK, we're not teaching that to people in university. We're not teaching the idea that there is an OSI model. It's not yeah. happening, right? <clears throat> so <throat> when we talk about um, all the, you know, understanding the full stack, I see students all the time that are being taught PHP or they're being taught database technology, but they're not, being, they're not don't being they're not being taught. PHP, yeah, they're not <laughs> being taught. The, the absolute fundamentals. And but by the way, the, these aren't comp sci courses, these are computer security courses. Yeah. Oh yeah. geez, and really? Yes okay. indeed in the UK. And so why a student needs to go away and do a year on PHP, I have absolutely no idea. When I mean, when that year could be better spent learning Jira. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> you fucking cynic. No, <laughs> no, I mean I, I would say I would say yes. I wish that they had had taught me Jira, but considering the fact that it it becomes a completely different system, you know, yeah. every year, then uh, that knowledge is going to be outdated pretty quick. And we stop know. learning about security and start learning about <laughs> ticketing systems. <laughs> Confluence, <laughs> woohoo! Yeah. Uh, no, ab absolutely. Um, uh, but but in PHP's defense, I think that's actually a good way to learn security, just because there's so many ways you can screw it up. Well, yeah, quite. Yeah. <laughs> like i i mean that that that's um one of the first well i guess technically the first like web language i did write a bunch of cgi bin stuff in c because i'm i'm not my fucking punishment mind. well why not <laughs> it was the only language i knew and i wanted to make a dynamic web application you gotta you know? start somewhere it was 19 it was 1998 and give me a fucking break um, but, um, <laughs> yellow no, screen but, but, black blinking text <laughs> all right <laughs> the little the little got animated gif with the guy with the shovel saying site yeah. under construction <laughs> brilliant, oh, it's my brilliant. Time. <laughs> listen we we are done uh, our time is done with you uh kelly oh, okay. ah! and it happened so fast uh, I know, i'm sorry but no it was brilliant absolutely was so yeah, yeah. cool so yeah. cool Good, so, because now I, I get to go and do shots with my boyfriend. Fantastic. All right. well, will you enjoy doing that? And on behalf of the Bear Farmers and the people listening, thank you very much indeed for your time. Oh, thank you for having it, having me. Hopefully, I, I was not completely nonsensical. No, no it's brilliant. brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Kelly. All the best. Yeah, you too. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. bye.